I wanted to do a little follow-up video on power amplifier ratings and watts and all that. We talked a little bit on the last video about how you can actually, how they rate an amplifier in watts and how we use the RMS voltage, AC voltage, and we divide that into, or we use the little math formula, okay, which is the V squared over R, and we determine how many watts is being dissipated by the load, which would be, in, in our case, in the last video, was the load resistor. So what I'm going to do now is show you a little bit about how it's not as easy as that. When we test an amplifier, we test it with an, what's called a non-inductive load. In other words, that resistor that we're using as a dummy load never changes. It's always 8 ohms and it ne nothing ever affects it. And so your load is constant. But a speaker is not constant. And what we're going to find out here pretty soon is that speakers dynamically change their impedance or their load with frequency. So I set up a little uh, test setup here to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So if you look at this little picture here, basically what, a, what, a, what we're doing here is we have a signal generator and the signal generator is set out to put out 2 volts RMS. No matter what the actual um, frequency is this frequency generator will always put out 2 volts RMS. We're then running it through an amp meter, a milliamp meter. Now this little shunt resistor that the, my meter uses does present a little bit of a resistive load, <coughs> but not an inductive load. So it will affect all this a wee little bit. And then across my speaker we have our speaker right here, and then across the speaker we have our oscilloscope. And I have the measurement on my oscilloscope <coughs> set to, me <coughs> excuse me, to measure RMS voltage and peak-to-peak -peak voltage. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the current flowing through the speaker and the voltage applied across the speaker at whatever given frequency, and we're going to calculate what kind of a load the actual amplifier would be seeing on that speaker, okay? So, to show that it's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start out with a 1 kilohertz test signal, and we're going to connect it across this speaker. Now, this speaker, statically, when you, when you read it with an ohm meter, reads about 4, 4.1, 4.2 ohms statically, just that coil, okay? So it actually has a DC resistance of just a little over 4 ohms, okay? So when we turn this on, remember we're putting 2 volts RMS across the speaker. Now when we look at this, okay, excuse the noise, what you're seeing right here is your 1 kilohertz waveform. And if you can see, our RMS voltage is about 1.62 or 0.162 volts or 162 millivolts. And the current flowing through the circuit is about 35 milliamps AC. And again, this is true RMS it's measuring. Everything we're doing in RMS right now. So let's do the math. I'll turn this off. And, again, we can just use basic Ohm's Law. So if we have, what did we have? We had 0.162 volts, okay, divided by 0 0.035 amps, okay? So we know that resistance equals voltage divided by current, okay? voltage in volts, current in amps. So if we take our calculator and we do 0.162 divided by 0.035, we see that we have an impedance at 1 kilohertz of about 4.62 ohms. Okay, 
So there's what voltage we had. RMS, amps RMS equals this many ohms. So our 4.1 ohm speaker looks like a 4.6 ohm speaker with one kilohertz applied across it. All right. So now let's uh, move this up to 10 kilohertz and see what happens. Now, excuse the loud sound, it's going to be noisy, but you might, the, speed, the microphone may pick that up, I don't know. So now you can see our current is pretty similar. It's 0 0.0342 amps, and our voltage is about 201 millivolts. Okay, and you can see the waveform's a little bit taller. And shut that noise off. Okay. And then once again, we're going to take 0.201, that's for your voltage, divided by 0.0342. And now our impedance is 5. 0.87 ohms. Okay, so the actual apparent resistance or the impedance has increased. Now we're going to keep going. All right, now we're going to go down and we're going to go down to 100 hertz. Okay. Okay, so we did 100, 1,000, and 10,000 hertz. Okay, so let's turn that on. Again, I'm not changing the amplitude coming out of the signal generator. And if you look once again, you have about 0.333 volts, and our current is point zero three three five let's call it amps all right and if we do the numbers there again point three 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 divided by point zero oh three three five equals now we're up to about nine point nine four ohms okay so as you notice as we vary the frequency, the apparent, the impedance is changing on that speaker. Now watch what happens when we get down below, down to the lower operating cycle of this amplifier. I'm going to turn it on. I'm at 60 hertz right now, okay? Now I'm at 80 hertz. Now I'm at 100. So 100, 80, he's catching all that. 60. So when we were at 100, or I'm sorry, there's 100. Remember we were getting about 0.33, all right, 330 millivolts, give or take. When we go down to 80, now we're at 0.580 volts at about 27 milliamps, 0 0.0273 amps, and that's going to equal 0.580 divided by 0 0.0273, and look at that, 21.2 ohms, okay? Now, if we go back down, now we're down to 30 hertz, and we have to change our time base a little bit. And if we look at 30 hertz, we're right back down to around 142 millivolts. So we're just a little tiny bit in our amperage, our current is 35 milliamps again. So it's going to be very close to are 4.5 or so ohms again. Okay, so what you're seeing here as we go up, see the big jump? 
from 80 hertz to 90 hertz. Look at that big jump. What you're seeing is kind of that free air resonance point, as they call it, of the speaker. So when you hear about speakers having resonance points, okay, this is what they're talking about. It's the point at which the speaker most freely um, dissipates the energy, or resists it, I should say, okay? So if you look, there's a lot of voltage on there because the speaker is presenting a higher resistance, and instead of dissipating all that current and voltage into the speaker, it's now passing it because the speaker is resonating. As I, if I slow it down, you can see if the speaker moves less, if I hold it, it drops the voltage down. If I let it go, it goes up because that, that motion is changing the impedance because of that electromagnetic field in there. Okay? And if you notice, the sound actually, you can hear it pretty well. Alright? It's really hard to hear on the microphone. But when you get up to that resonant point there, it actually gets a little bit louder. Okay? So, once again, when they say 8 ohms, like an 8 ohm speaker or a 4 ohm speaker, what they're really telling you is that that's the average impedance that it'll present to an amplifier at a given set of frequencies. Just understand that that changes, okay? And then as you get to a certain point, the speaker no longer moves, that becomes less of an influence, and the DC resistance becomes more of the impedance than, than does the actual impedance, okay? I hope some of that makes a little bit of sense. But just understand that the amplifier and the speaker work as a team. They work together. They both interact with one another. And if you notice, when I put my hand on that, so let's turn it back on, when I put my hand on there, it dampened that a little bit, and it changed the impedance of the circuit. So essentially, when I'm building a speaker box, all those math formulas you do about box volume, like how much airspace, whether it's ported or not ported, all those things affect that, because they act like my hand right now pushing on the cone. And the idea is, a properly designed box working in conjunction with a properly chosen and designed speaker will present a per relatively even load to the amplifier and put out a relatively even sound across the whole frequency spectrum. That's what we're shooting for when we're trying to build an accurate sound system, an accurate set of speakers and an accurate amplifier. Okay? So, there's a lot more, I guess my point from this is there's a lot more to an amplifier and a stereo system and an audio system than just how many watts is it rated at, um, how big are the speakers, how big is the magnet, all those things. Sure, those affect it, but everything has to work together and everything has to be designed properly to work at its optimal level. You could have a very expensive, high quality speaker put in a poorly constructed cabinet or connected to a poorly designed amplifier and it would sound lousy. You could have a great amplifier and a great speaker in a bad speaker box, again, sound lousy. So everything works together and I guess that's what I'm trying to talk about and when you look at some of the older vintage equipment that I've been doing videos on, you actually come to find out that a lot of this stuff really um, is a lot better quality than the things you see today. All of those things were taken into account back when that equipment was, was produced. They wanted to build the very best. I mean, it was, it was a science, not an appliance at the time. Um, today, that type of equipment still exists, but you don't normally find it out, you know, in Walmart or wherever, you know, your big box stores. And you certainly, when you do find equipment of that build quality, much more expensive today to get something than it was back then. Of course, when you adjust for inflation, I guess it's about the same. But, 
you know, rebuilding and purchasing a properly restored uh, receiver or amplifier and a good set of speak well-built speakers, um, it's a great investment because when you buy a used setup that's in immaculate condition, that was well maintained and well restored and take and well adjusted, you can spend maybe a thousand or a couple thousand dollars on that equipment, but it's going to perform as well as something you may spend ten thousand dollars for brand new. And believe it or not, there are sound systems, stereos out there, audio systems. $10,000 isn't that much money. I mean, the sky's the limit. You can spend as much as you want. But it's really about the design. Okay? So I hope this uh, cleared up the air a little bit about how, you know, how speakers are rated, how amplifiers are rated, how the amplifier interacts with the speaker, and how the speaker affects the entire circuit, what kind of load that it presents to the amplifier is very dependent on a lot of things just you know for instance the frequency that you're testing it at the type of box that it's in all those things um, how stiff the cone and the surround are all those things affect it so I uh, hope you got something out of this I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you give me a thumbs up uh, if this uh, helped you out any or was interesting and uh, more to come later